by God's grace. We do not merit an internet. No matter what is we're missing, what we have, it's already a lot. And that's why we glorify the Lord. Those who have nothing, they are in the grave. For us, we have the breath of life. Even for that, there's no money in the pocket. But I have the breath of life. Even for this, I will go to the Lord. Let the the Lord comes back. He's not doing it for men. It's for God that we have done this. It's marvelous. We need to the word of God. This is the place. We are going through a moment that we need to be revealed in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Three or four weeks. We take four weeks. We have prayer Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We have prayer Wednesday, 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 Wednesday, and Thursday. And pray and pray and pray. And ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we said that during this time, that we will speak of the Holy Spirit. We speak of the Holy Spirit. We speak of the Holy Spirit. We said it three times. We know why. Last week, we spoke about humbling ourselves before the Lord. You know, calling up in His grace. Accepted to be broken by the Lord. Accepted to be broken by the Lord. And for this, we need the Holy Spirit. For Him to come and help us. You know, to learn how to humble ourselves. To accept to be humble. To accept to be changed and modified by the Lord. We want to be something. But what God wants for us to be, it is what is the most important. Because it's where the reward is, there is blessing, there is eternal life. Instead of being what I want to be, for me to leave the Lord to change me, to do with me as He wish, and that is only possible when we have the help of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we learned last Sunday. We said not only humble and give yourself, but also accept to die. To die in everything that concerns the flesh. Where people that are criticized are found. Where people that are critical are insulted. Where people that are critical are found. People that speak wicked. People that speak wickedly. But not your name is found. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For our names not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. Not your name is found. For in that group not to be included. To leave that camp, that is the camp of death. Those who are inside, they will go to death. But God did not call us to death. But He called us to possess eternal life through His Son Jesus. Therefore, we must leave that camp. We must die in that camp in order to go into the camp of life. And for that, we need the Holy Spirit. Ask for His help. For because by ourselves we cannot. There's nothing good in ourselves. Nothing good. Without the Lord, there's nothing good. And when we say nothing good, we don't see according to man. Man can appreciate us. They can consider us as exceptional. But when God looks at us, there's nothing good in us. There's nothing. It's only when the Holy Spirit comes and that we accept and that we see good things happening. In us. And today we speak of last week was to prepare us. Today we speak of this title. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit. We read Matthew 7 7. We will go back to it again. Before asking, you must know who the Holy Spirit is. And then we'll see why ask and how to ask. 
Qui est le Saint-Esprit? Le Saint-Esprit, c'est une personne. C'est difficile de traduire ça dans nos langues parce que quand on parle d'une personne, on croit que c'est un être humain. It is difficult to understand this because when we say man, it's like a human being. Le Saint-Esprit est différent du Père. It means that the Holy Spirit is different to the Father. Et le Saint-Esprit est différent du Fils. And the Holy Spirit is different to the Son. Le Saint-Esprit parle. The Holy Spirit speaks. Il écoute aussi. He listens. Que le Saint-Esprit a une volonté. The Holy Spirit has a will. The Holy Spirit does things. And that's why he's called a person. The Holy Spirit is not a thing. In God there are three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Le Saint-Esprit est une personne qui est souvent très mal connue. The Holy Spirit is the person that we know less of. It's really not known at all. And sometimes we have ideas that are not correct by the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we have things that are correct. But it's just a part of the Holy Spirit. Just one facet. And we are there just staying in that prayer. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than what we know. We know that the Holy Spirit is more than When we prophesy, we say that's the Holy Spirit. We limit there. The Holy Spirit is bigger than that. And that's what we want to explore and understand. When you ask, you must know what you may receive. Because if you do not know what you can receive, God can give. But it goes aside. Because I was waiting for some such thing. And when I've asked, in, in, in God's handbag, there's many things, there's priorities. He gives what He wants. And when He gives, He wants for you to receive it. Today we speak of asking, asking in order to obtain the Holy Spirit. We said that He's less known, very badly known. I don't know what you know about the Holy Spirit. But I think that through the Holy Spirit, through the message, you will add something. The Holy Spirit does not speak of Himself. It is the Father who speaks of the Holy Spirit. It is the Son who speaks of the Holy Spirit. But through the Scriptures, we see who the Holy Spirit is. The Bible calls Him the Helper. In certain verses, it said Advocate or Defender. Dans les versions anglaises, le mot qui est souvent utilisé, c'est celui qui aide. And in English version, it is the helper. Ce sont les noms qui sont synonymes. It is the names that are the same. Donc c'est le même, c'est la même personne. It's the same person. Holy Spirit is called the helper. Holy Spirit. Dans la Bible, pour mieux comprendre les saints, il faut voir chaque fois, à toutes les occasions, à tous les endroits. You must see all the time in the Bible where the Holy Spirit is speaking. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is speaking about the function of what he does. And when you read what he does, you understand who he is. In Isaiah 11, it says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. It means that if God gives me the Holy Spirit, I will have wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God is the spirit of intelligence, knowledge, understanding the things of God, understanding the things of God. When God gives me His spirit, I become wise in the things of God. I live a pure person and I listen to the word and understand. I have understanding of the It is not human intelligence. I can have the diplomas and not understand the spiritual things. But when I have the Holy Spirit, cette compréhension. The Lord gives me this understanding spiritually. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is the counsel, the spirit of counsel. Therefore, when God gives me the spirit, the spirit of God is with me. He counsels me. He speaks to me. He tells me this is what you must do. Do not do this. Go left here. Do not commit to this way. Because he knows the future. He knows the will of the Father. He does what God wants. He is my advisor. When God sends me his Holy Spirit, 
à moi. The Holy Spirit il est ici. Il work for me. Il me conseille. Quand j'ai des problèmes, problème. quand j'ai des difficultés, c'est ma tour de faire lui. J'écris à lui. Je demande son aide. Et il me donne son conseil. Il me souffle derrière mon oreille. Il me donne son chemin. C'est ce chemin. Walk this way. Go this way. This is the way. Do not follow him. But go through this way. Because you have victory there. Because God has planned this for you. Because you have victory there. Because God has planned this for you. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the fear of the Lord. When I have the Spirit of God, I walk in fear of the Lord. I fear the Lord. Even in the smallest things. No. I say no. This one. God would not be happy with this. I would not do it. God would not accept this. I would not do it. They are people. Or testimony or not. This is enough. Because the Spirit of God is here. The Spirit is not here. The Spirit is not here. He is with me everywhere. When it's something that is not right, he's here. He sends it to me. He makes me walk in this fear. Because I do not fear because he said it in church. Not because it was said. But I fear the Lord. 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 Because I have this fear inside of me. It's the Holy Spirit that can give me this fear. The Bible says the Spirit of might. Contrary to the Spirit of timidity. That sometimes we have in the spiritual things. We are very timid. 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 We are And one soul is gained because he's there. Because he's there with us. Because he makes us able. It is the spirit of might. The might and the power in the power. The enemy cannot stand strong because the spirit of God is there. The spirit of God makes him run. It's the spirit of might. It's what the Bible says. Is it the same Holy Spirit that you know? Or do you only, do you only know He will ask for His speaking tongue, or He prophesies and heals? But it's the Spirit of God. It's what we say. It's in the Bible. The Bible says the Spirit of truth. If He's in me, I will only speak of the truth. I will only say the truth wherever I go. Before every situation comes, when I speak, it is the truth that comes out of my mouth. This truth that is conforming to the word of God. You know, outside is lies. But in the spirit of God, this truth. I am in the truth. You know, I back the truth day and night, wherever I am. It is the truth that comes out of me. He is the spirit of holiness. When he's there with me, that is in me. He leads me. He pushes me. I feel it in me. This desire to preserve myself. To walk in holiness. To avoid all wickedness. To avoid everything that may displease us. No matter the situation. Everything is is there for me, but not everything is useful. It's what the Bible says. There are things that just make us filthy. Therefore, I will not do that. I do not. I won't follow this way. I will not go there. I will not touch that because the Spirit of God approaches me. Holiness reminds me that you must do this. You must walk in holiness. He is with me. 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 The Bible says the Spirit of glory when He is in me. I glorify the Lord in every time, in all circumstances, in every occasion. I speak of the Lord. I elevate Him. I praise Him. I worship Him. I understand that He's the Lord of Lords. That He's above all. Everything that I am is for Him. I praise Him. I give Him thanks for His greatness. The Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit of grace. It is the grace. The grace and the favor of the Lord. Grace is something that we do not merit or deserve. We are wicked. We are very evil. Nothing good. But there, God, He does something good for us. By grace alone, we are so weak. We must die. But then God, He keeps us alive. It is grace alone. And when the Spirit of God comes, 
He brings the favor of the Lord. He brings the grace of the Lord. He did not deserve it. He was not hard to have it. He did not feel out the condition. But only by grace you receive it. By grace, by God's grace, you can receive it. By God's grace, it shows me things happen in your life. It does not mean that you are special. It does not mean that you are higher than others. It's only by God's grace that has touched you. And that's why you have received healing. And that's why you receive answers. It's the Spirit of God. It's in work. It's always 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 in work. Ask yourself the question. This Holy Spirit that you know, or is another? Or your vision is limited. You only see certain aspects. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Here we want to speak of the Holy Spirit. In all its fullness. Beaucoup de dons spirituels, mais le même esprit saint. Mais le même esprit saint. Only one, one spirit, the one Holy Spirit. Il y a beaucoup de services, diversité de services, mais le même Seigneur. Diversité d'opérations, mais c'est le même Dieu qui opère en tout et tous. Et au verset 7, Paul, à chacun la manifestation de l'esprit est donnée pour l'utilité commune. En effet, à l'un est donnée par l'esprit une parole de sagesse, à un autre une parole de connaissance, à un autre la foi par le même esprit. À un autre, le don de guérison, par le même esprit. À un autre, le don d'opérer des miracles. Et à un autre, la prophétie. À un autre, le discernement des esprits. À un autre, divers sortes de langues. À un autre, l'interprétation des langues. Un seul et même esprit opère toutes ces choses, les distribuant à chacun en particulier comme il veut. Alléluia. Amen. Donc la Bible dit quand il vient, il apporte des dons. 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 Pour l'utilité commune. The gift that we use in the community for others. You receive a gift. For the together of the children's love. It does not give it for yourself. For your family. Or for the corporate body of God. To edify the children of God. If you can give the gift of healing. It is to heal other people. If you can give God to prophesy. It is to give messages to other people. It doesn't. To edify the body of Christ. This is what the Bible says. He distributes them as he wants. This person has a such gift, and the other one has another gift. He has not got the don. He does not even know he has the don. Some people have gifts, but they don't know that they have gifts. Because for them, gifts. Where there is the physical manifestation outside. Where you see the spiritual gift that so many. So you can have the gift that God has given you. You can have something that God has given you. You know, to have the gift of wisdom. But you ignore it completely. You always. Live as if someone who had nothing. Whereas God has the grace upon you, He has given you this. It is yours to use it. And the problem with the gift is that that the day of the judgment, the Bible says, we will be accountable. God will ask you. I gave you the gift of. What have you done with it? It is for you then to explain. What have you done with it? Of that gift. Si tu gardé, but if you kept it, you did not use it. You ignored it. You did not use it. It would be a problem with your God. And that's how we preach. For our intelligence to open up. For us to understand the marvels of God. When we speak of gifts, it is a favor. It does not mean that you deserve it. If you have a gift, it is God who has given it to you. It is not because you've done something. You are not special. You are not different. But it's only God's grace. Therefore, you cannot boast about yourself and glorify yourself. We cannot glorify someone else's gift. For the gift, we glorify the Lord. 
Because it's him who gives. It's him who has the seed. It's just an instrument that God wants to use. It is not because you deserve it. Us men, we look at what hits the eye. When God looks, he looks at the heart. And he looks at the future. And in relation to that, and according to sovereignty, he gives. When we have the gift, we glorify the Lord. When we have a brother, sister, has a gift, we glorify the Lord. We try to explain what the Holy Spirit does in different aspects. Today we said we speak of asking for the Holy Spirit. We can ask ourselves the question, why must we ask? There are many reasons the forces that the Lord himself has given to you. That's why the Holy Spirit can do anything. Remind of yourself. And so he said that we are the Holy Spirit. I cannot do anything. This is the Lord who is saying this. And that the Holy Spirit that accomplishes the will of God in my life. If God has made a promise for me, it's the Holy Spirit who will fulfill it. When we speak of miracles, we speak of blessing, we speak of healing, it is the Holy Spirit that will fulfill it. The Holy Spirit of God comes to fulfill. And that's what you want to do. You want to do this thing. You want to be blessed. You want to be healed. You want to be healed. You want to be healed. You want to be shocked with things. Miracles. It's the Holy Spirit that we do. You might live without the Holy Spirit. Ask for the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says to us, You are so weak before the enemy, before temptation of the enemy, before the traps of the enemy, before tribulation, before persecution, you cannot resist to it because you are weak, because of the flesh. Ask for the Holy Spirit for him to come and Ask for his assistance to resist to temptation, to resist to evil, to resist to the traps and to the tribulation. You want to lose your job for you to come out the soul, ask for the Holy Spirit. He is there to assist you. He is there to help you. It is the Lord who is saying that to us. It is not us who decide. We look for the Holy Spirit. The Lord who knows. He knows our lives. He knows our problems. He knows the difficulties. He knows the maneuvers of the enemy all around us. He said, ask. Ask. And you will receive. Amen. Ask. And you will receive. This word is certain. It is for you and I. The Lord says, simply ask. And it will be given to you. He says you need the Holy Spirit. Do not walk as ignorant. Do not be pretend, pretentious. It's someone who believes that he can. But the Lord says that you cannot. But you say you can. The Lord said by yourself you will fail. But you said I can. I will walk alone. I will go alone. We have the Holy Spirit. It is to go to failure. It is to go to death. Whereas the Bible says, seek for the Holy Spirit. Do not go alone. Do not go forward alone. Ask for the Holy Spirit to come and help you. There's difficulty. There are problems. There are barriers. Ask for the assistance of the Holy Spirit. He's there to help you. He will be there to help you. We ask because of recommendation. Because everything the Lord had said in Matthew 7. In Matthew 7. That we just read earlier. 11. It is for us that the Lord is saying this. If you ask, it will be given to you. And ask, if you ask, the Holy Spirit, the Father, will give you the Holy Spirit. If you seek for the Holy Spirit, the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. If you knock at the door of the Father in order to have the Holy Spirit, the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. It is a promise for us. But we do not use it. We walk as if we don't need the Holy Spirit. We walk as if we can ourselves in John 16, verse 24. The Bible says, Just at present, you have nothing to demand. Demandez et vous recevrez afin que votre joie soit parfaite. Tu demandes. 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 Tu demand
Il n'a pas dû marcher la tête d'en bas, lui en l'air. Il s'agit de upside down, just ask. 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 Il Ask. Parlez. Speak. Exprimez votre besoin. Express your desire for the Holy Spirit to be given to you. Ask is a promise of God. Say to the Lord, you said that if I ask, you will give to me. And here I come to ask, Lord, give me. In Matthew, we have read in verse 11, that we are so evil, we know how to give gifts to our children. So why did God give us bad things? And then why would God give us bad things? Because we have asked for the Holy Spirit. If we ask for the Holy Spirit, it will give him to us. How much more will God give us the Holy Spirit? When we ask, it is the word of God. It is true that we ask for many things. But we neglect the most important. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, these things that we look for, we will receive a truth. Before God will to underline something. What God gives, when we ask, it is a truth. God is not lie. He's not a son of man to lie. Because He said, if we ask, He will give to us. God gives to those who ask in the name of Jesus Christ. If we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. The Lord gives me in the name of Jesus Christ. He will give us. It is a promise again. Do not follow the thoughts of Satan. Yesterday I asked him to seek nothing. We will explore that problem. For us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God gives, the Bible says in Ephesians 3, 20, that he gives above what we can ask, above what we can even think. God does not give. He does not give by counting. When you give someone peanuts, they give a small quantity, they're actually counting the God does not count. He gives in abundance. You ask, He will pour it out. He will give you an abundance. He will give you an abundance. Above what even you ask for. But because you have a he said to the Lord, give me the Holy Spirit. He will give you above what you ask. And the Bible goes further. He gives you above even what you think. When you ask, you believe that he was going to give you this or that. But the Lord gives you more. More even what you think. It is a promise that is for me. For you also. This God hasn't changed. Yesterday he did. Today he will do it again. If today I ask, I will receive. Amen. And therefore, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us, it is not in the physical manifestation only. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit that is powerful. The Spirit of God transforms us. It transforms us. I cannot become a child of God without the Holy Spirit. I will make effort humanly, but I will always fail. But if you find a child of God, a true child of God, you look at this person and says, yes, yeah, child of God. With all the testimony of a child of God, it's only the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can transform us to make us children of God. Because the Holy Spirit raises the dead. My life, it was practically dead. Everything that I was doing, it was the work of darkness, the work of death. But when the Holy Spirit came, He transformed this death into life. He transformed my life. Today I live. I am not in the camp of death. The Holy Spirit can do this. It is never too late. Too late is for men. Too late is for intelligence. Too late is for our effort that fails. But when the Holy Spirit comes down, the impossible becomes possible. The miracles are coming. Amen. That can be happening in my life. That can happen in my life. No matter the aspect, no matter the problem, the measure of the Holy Spirit, it is not the manifestation that we see. The true time I to you, it's when the Holy Spirit is there. 
c'est comme quand on a allumé le feu. It's as if when there's a fire being lit. Si ça c'est une plaque métallique. Say this is a metallic plate. Et ici c'est caché. And here all around is hidden. Vous ne pouvez pas voir. You cannot see behind. Je vous dis. I say to you, and I just told you I, I, I set up some kind of fire, but you cannot see the fire. How would you know that there's a fire on the plate? It's by coming to touch the plate. Alleluia. Amen. When you touch, then you feel the heat. You understand that there's fire there. The Spirit of God is the same thing. And the plate there, it is the fruit of the Spirit. It is Galatians 5.22. When you see Galatians 5.22 in someone, you understand that they are behind. The Spirit of God is there. Can we go back? Galatians 5.22. We'll read together. For us to be conscious of it. 5.22, nous lisons ensemble 1, 2, 3. Mais le fruit de l'esprit est amour, joie, paix, patience, bonté, bienveillance, fidélité, douceur, maîtrise de soi. La loi n'est pas contre les telles choses. Qu'est-ce qu'on peut reprendre pour ceux qui sont dans l'état Galates 5.22. Mais le fruit de l'esprit est amour, joie, paix, patience, bonté, bienveillance, fidélité, douceur, maîtrise de soi, la loi n'est pas contre les choses. La véritable façon de savoir que l'Esprit de Dieu est dans cette personne. The true way to know that the Holy Spirit is within that person. Vous le trouvez en elle, il y a l'amour de Dieu. It's when you find in the love of God. Il y a la joie de Dieu. The joy of the Lord. Il y a la paix de Dieu. There's the peace of the Lord. Il y a la patience de Dieu. There's the patience of God. Before the event, before circumstances. Il y a cette bonté là. There is that good in the hand of God upon you. This gentleness is God. It's faithfulness to God. And it's gentleness. Not extreme words. No wickedness. Not the, the words that are brought. But it's, it's gentleness. They avoid anything that may hurt. It is gentleness. It is self control. They are not brought. They take control of themselves. This is the work of the Spirit of God. When the Spirit of God is working, it is the true tamarind. For the rest, the devil can lie to us. He can lie to us. But if you see this, it's only the Holy Spirit that can make this impossible. If you see this, it's only the Spirit of God. And if you don't have this, therefore we must make effort to leave the Holy Spirit producing us he is ready to do this and he is able to do it no matter our life no matter our past and if you come a moment you say Lord I want all of you I want all of you when these people are excited for me to be excited I want to be among those people he will do it he will help us he will assist us and the spirit of God not only on the other side of us does not just want to be beside us, but also within us. The Holy Spirit can be here, in this hall, in this endings that we have created. But is, is, is He in you? Because He can be here. He can, it's such a person. It's in another person. But the question is myself. Is the Holy Spirit within me? The Holy Spirit does not just want to stay in that other place. It will also the name of you individually. This is the sign of the Holy Spirit. He's there. He's there. It is for me to open up my heart. For him to come. And to see. Who is the Holy Spirit? Not only that we will have the Holy Spirit. Look, the Lord hopes not for only us to have the Holy Spirit. But to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To see the Holy Spirit of God. 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 In abundance, he gives it. He gives it. What do you accept him? In abundance. In abundance. Do you seek? Do you seek? Do you seek? Do you seek? For the Lord, add more. To even add more. To add more and more. To add even more and more and more. Because we have the Holy Spirit. I cannot please God. I cannot do anything that will please God. We have the Holy Spirit. I don't know what to ask for. Sometimes we pray that are opposite to the will of God. That we say things. You ask for things, but it's not the will of God. The Bible says the Spirit of God. 
l'Esprit de Dieu vient au secours de notre faiblesse. Parce que nous ne savons pas ce qu'il faut demander. Because we do not know what we must ask for. Romains 8, 26. Romains 8, 26. De même, l'Esprit vient au secours de notre faiblesse car nous ne savons pas ce qu'il convient de demander dans nos prières. Donc je prie. I pray. But what do I say? What do I ask for? Is it according to the will of the Father? I don't know. But I pray. Because I have desires. I have hopes. But it corresponds to what God wants. I don't want to see. I will not pray. That is contrary to the will of the Father. That is contrary to the will of the Father. Ask for a car. 
As for nationality, as for homes, as for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is so important. It's above all these things that if I must ask for the Holy Spirit, I must come uniquely for the Holy Spirit. That Lord, I come. Your Spirit. I come to ask for Your Spirit. I need Your Holy Spirit. And the, the rest of them, when I have the Holy Spirit, I have it. No matter what I'm looking for, that if I have the Holy Spirit, I will have all the rest. Therefore, I look on this day, and I'm more I'm only asking for the Holy Spirit. I know everything else, all the difficulties. It is the joy that's missing. I walk in tribulations. I have no money. I am sick. No matter the problem. Forcing for the Holy Spirit to come. For the Holy Spirit to come in prayer. I must ask in prayer. A prayer that is concentrated, focused on the Holy Spirit. A prayer made in faith. You must not ask and not be sure. I ask, but I'm not sure that I will receive. I ask, but I think that will not happen. I ask when I look at my life to listen, that does not work. When I ask if I think, it is by God's grace. There are things that are not working. But I ask for the Holy Spirit. But you should come and ask me for that thing to work. I am not waiting for that thing to work for us. I ask for the assistance of the Holy Spirit. Because I need it. If I had no need for it, I ask. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, I need you. Assist me. There is my prayer. Concentrate. Focus on the Holy Spirit. And faith and assurance. He who said ask and you receive, he will give to me. I am certain of this prayer, of this promise. We have three ways of asking. We can ask to the Father in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, give me the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We can ask directly to the Son. Lord, give me your Spirit directly to Him. Or else we can ask directly that we fill with the Holy Spirit. Where therefore we just open up. We say, Holy Spirit, come. So Holy Spirit, come to me. The Spirit of God, fill me. The Spirit of God, take place in my life. We open the eyes of the Holy Spirit. The three ways of prayer are acceptable. They are normal. They are beautiful. You can speak, you can uh, choose one of another way to do this prayer. But so ask yourself the question Why do I need the Holy Spirit? Why do I need the Holy Spirit? Because if we preach about it, because I want to be like the other person. Because I also want to show that I'm a child of God. Is it my uh, rivalry, rivalry, competition? Is it just to amuse myself, competition that I do this? If God has given a gift to such person, if I ask, He will not give me necessarily the same gift. He can give me something that is completely different. We must ask the question and all motivation, why am I looking for the Holy Spirit? And the, first, the, the good answer is that I'm looking for the Holy Spirit first of all for the glory of God. But also for the Holy Spirit to come and help me. To come and assist me. And to accomplish the will of the Father in me. If my prayer is based on this, it is the most I will not ask for the Holy Spirit to prophesy. No, no, not to speak in tongues. I ask for the Holy Spirit. If God He gives to me to speak in tongues, then great. Amen. If He gives, he gives me prophecies, then great. But if you give me wisdom as well, great. I am pleased with that because God in His wisdom. In his plan, it's why he has planned. I will not go with him. Why is just this person born again? It just depends on God. I ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit comes, it distributes the gift. It's according to God. Sometimes.
Because God knows you. There are people here, if you hide that gift, then you laugh all together. Because of that gift. Because there are gifts that make people so boastful. And God says, no. As you are there, you are not ready yet. I will not give you this gift. It is not bad. It's what you do. Therefore, I just ask. What God gives me, I accept it. I welcome it. I just accept it. There's an illustration in the Bible in Acts There's someone who went to ask for the Holy Spirit with bad intention, really bad motivation. He saw Simon the magician. He saw that the apostles they were laying hands. And the disciples were receiving the Holy Spirit. And he went to see the apostles with money. He said, I need that whatever you have. I want I'll pay whatever you need to pay. You give me as well. Not only will I have this, but also where I will go. If I lay hands, for the person also have the Holy Spirit. You see the bad intention he had. You can read the remaining in the Bible. Act uh, 8, verse 20. This is an illustration, an illustration of what we must avoid. I'm looking for the Holy Spirit first of all, the glory of God, for Him to come and help me to fulfill the will of the Father in me. Therefore, ask and desire, but ask with all your heart. You have to have this thirst in you. The Bible says, who is thirsty to come and drink? In Revelation 21. You must have this thirst in you. You know, just for one day. It does not happen today. You know when you are thirsty, you should not have water here. You will continue asking for it. Because the church continues. You will continue asking until you will have something to drink. You will not say, because I have not given it, it's finished. You must continue asking. Continue asking. With all your heart. With the church that is so tense. God looks at the heart. He understands. When you, the motives are so sincere, it's revealed according to his word, his promise. And then we can ask. Simply for the Holy Spirit to intervene in our lives for a situation. Come, Holy Spirit. Look what I'm going through. Look at the difficulties. Look at the battles of my life. Alone, I cannot do it. Look at the tribulations. Look at the persecutions. Alone, I cannot. Holy Spirit, come and sustain me. Come and assist me. Look at my health. I need your help. I've asked. The healing for glory. But it does not come. Holy Spirit comes. Manifest yourself. Therefore, ask for the Holy Spirit for a situation. For a certain need. It's not a sin. It's normal. I can pray to the Lord. Call upon the grace of the Lord for Him to send His Holy Spirit. Because when His Holy Spirit comes, He comes to intervene. He comes to work. He comes to accomplish miracles. What amazes man. But how did this happen? No, it's impossible. It's impossible. It cannot happen. No, but it has happened. Because the Holy Spirit of God has, it has worked. We are amazed. Even science is amazed. Medicine is amazed. It does not happen this way. Normally, this situation, it, was, it goes like this. Like that. This is normal. But when the Holy Spirit of God comes, Normal. He does things that are not normal. Because he's not. He does things that he wants. It will take two years, six months. The Holy Spirit in two days can do something that will add to the Lord. He comes to give life. And there's a different universe also. I can ask for his help. For him to intervene. He can concern me myself. There are things that I do. It's important to talk. Here is what I look for. I seek to give it up, but it's not work. I ask for the Holy Spirit. I failed for 10 years. And my failure in one month of absolution, the Holy Spirit has changed things around. What I could not let go for 10 years, in one month I have 
What I could not obtain for three years, the Holy Spirit when He comes, He touches the heart, He prepares the heart to have nationality. In two or three days, you had it. You are made to have He said, normally, according to what we said, in what the Father must go, do this, and then after, when the Holy Spirit comes, we are not in the normal. We are not normal. Abnormal is that amazes the world, but not even amazes God, because it's a God of miracles. He does it for the glory of His name, for the testimony of His name. Amen. The Holy Spirit can do it for you and I. We can ask, how can I remain quiet? When we, we said, ask for Him, for Him to come. Give me what is to bear. Ask, let me know why you're losing You are in that situation. If he does not go, you remain in that situation. If he goes, he can let you, he can let you to come out of that situation. But if you don't want to, who's losing out of it? It is you who's losing. Because if he does not come, you remain here. Maybe he will get worse. Therefore, if you understand, it is the promise of God. Lord, I need your hope. And therefore, we are joined. I need your hope. We are trusting in you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come. And the heart is available. For those who have the Holy Spirit already, we can ask. Just fullness, many, more, more in abundance. There's no selfishness in the Holy Spirit. You have it. You can ask more. If God gives you plenty, no one will miss out. Because he has enough for each one of us. Therefore you ask. Continue on asking. It will never be enough. As long as we are in this world, we always need. Keep asking. Night and day, I will give. Lord, I am more. Even when I am doing miracles, keep asking. Lord, I am more. Lord, I need your spirit. I want to feel. Lord, I need your spirit. 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 It would give me. The Spirit of God is here for me. Do not ignore His presence. Do not ignore His hand that is outstretched. Ask for Him to give. Amen. Can we stand your place? If the musician can come forward.